This is just a quick follow-up to my video from the other day. This is Alex um, on this <clears throat> American Series L50. Um, number of uh, two, two of the guys uh, were nice enough to forward me a PDF um, from a locksmithing journal from the 60s um, with instructions on um, disassembling these things and how they how they go together. Um, so if you recall from the video, I found this funny screw down inside the um, one side of this thing. And I thought it might be some disassembly thing, but it wasn't clear what to do. Um, so it turns out there's a little pin that sits in here. Make sure I can, yeah. That sits in this space. Here, there's a little hole. And it goes into a little groove in the plug. Um, and this little screw... Um, goes down into the, the hole there and keeps that pin from popping out, uh, thereby retaining the plug. Um, so to get this out um, on these locks, um, which are all a bit, well, they've all been used a bit, um, I took the screws out and the instructions basically said to take it with a rubber mallet and whack it um, a number of times um, to get the, to basically drive the pin down. That didn't work. Um, so I got out my trusty can of WD-40, sprayed a bunch in there, let it sit for a few minutes, and then repeated the procedure with the mallet, and sure enough, they all popped open. And so what I found, and by the way, I do actually have keys to these. I hadn't completely opened the box they came in when I did the video. Um, but what I found is that you can now take the plug out, and you can see the wafer tumblers in there. Let me get, well, that's okay. Set that there and get a little close-up of him. That's a decent shot, I think. So you can see the wafers in here. And you can see the kind of action that happens as you, oops, turn back in frame, yeah as you run like a rake oops, if I can keep it from disassembling itself as you run a rake through it it'll lift up on these things and you know, randomly bring them into position now the key for this looks like this make sure I've got it oriented, yeah key looks like this a number of people sort of interested whether like it's a double-sided key well it sort of is but if you look carefully at it it's uh it's symmetrical right so it goes down here it goes up here right um but it is true some of the wafers really the high wafers get pushed down uh or the wafers yeah the wafers that are high um get drawn down by the bits on the bottom and the ones that are low get pushed up by the ones on the top so you do need both profiles to to operate the lock but the key can only go in one way obviously because of the the wards are asymmetrical but when the key is fully inserted into the lock which is a bit of a there we go a bit hard for some reason when it's out then everybody lines up and it lines up with the shear line, which is apparent here. You can see that big notch, big notch on each side. I think most of you are probably familiar with how wafer tumblers work. Um, the other thing I thought was kind of cool is the, the interface. So this is the end of the plug, or the inside end of the plug. You can see it's got kind of a half moon shape here, another half moon shape there, and then the tip of the key pops out. And then, let's see if we can get a little light in here. There we go. You can see the engagement point. There's a little tab that's at about 7 o'clock. And that's what the, is that right? Yeah. And that's what the, that half moon engages with. And that turns it around. Um, now, what's interesting, if you look at this carefully, and you look at the back of this carefully, it's sort of analogous to... the your modern, your other, uh, or the the pin tumbler American locks, where you have a a solid half moon here, and then a quarter of a circle on the inside, right? And we all know that those have a vulnerability. So I, uh, for for bypass, because you can reach a a wire a, a wire or pick in there and spin the 
um, bolts around. I suspect that this has a similar vulnerability, although it might be a little harder. I don't know. You can tell me, but you might. I think you probably could get something in the center there and um, and knock that around. So it's interesting that they've had this same design property for well, I don't know, for a long time. Although some of these locks apparently were made in the uh, 90s, but um, uh, I've got an older one here that has the same type of core. I don't. I don't think I picked this one on camera, but it's the same idea. Here's its core. I don't have a key for this one. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, and this this actually is pretty old because it has the Junk Nook, Junk Nook Brothers, Junk Nook Brothers um, thing on it. So it's a little older. Um, it does not have a date stamp on it, so I guess they hadn't started doing that then. But it has the same mechanism. Apparently, according to the article, you could get various different cores for this of different lengths and so forth or uh, styles, I don't know, maybe different numbers of uh, wafers in them um, or keyways. So I thought that was kind of neat. So then that little pin that I was talking about that retains the plug rides in that channel there. It's about 90 degrees worth of arc and uh, keeps the plug from coming out. And then there's a little tiny hole which if I focus and apply a bit of light, you can see that hole there, and there's a little tiny pin down in there. And so you kind of tap that back into the groove, put the screw in, and it keeps the pin, keeps the pin and keeps the tumbler in. So whatever this design is, it's pretty good. This, this lock has obviously been in the elements um, a good bit. Um, it's a little bit, oops, a little bit corroded. Um, some of these, well, are, yeah, it's weathered. Yeah, both of these are, are from the same lot. Um, the inside is pristine, though. I mean, the if you look at the thing, it's it's shiny. I haven't really cleaned this at all. There's this older one was kind of gooey inside, but um, it's fairly well sealed up, I would say. Um, and the screws are brass. Um, so unlike the the uh, like the 5200, where the screws are some kind of steel that rusts. This is brass, this is brass, the body is brass, so you're not going to get any serious corrosion in there. And it looked like, you know, it pretty much kept the elements out for a significant part. So it's probably a pretty reliable lock, however easy to pick it is. So, anyway, thanks to the guys um, for forwarding that uh, PDF. Um, let me know if, you want to, if anyone wants a copy of it. Um, and uh, gives a breakdown. I didn't try to gut the rest of this thing because uh, I'm not sure I can get it back together reliably, so I'm going to just leave it alone. But um, And if anyone wants to fiddle with one of these, I've got three of them, I think. So, um, yeah, here's the third one here. So, um, that one's shinier. But, uh, yeah. So, American L50 series. Um, gutted. And a little demo of... Uh, of wafer tumbler locks. So anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for thanks to everybody that responded to the uh, previous post. This is Alex. Have fun and stay legal. Thanks. Bye bye.